Brian. There's so much nostalgia here. Uh, players uh, only dream about playing here, and now they're getting the opportunity. All right, a quick look at the Team Canada roster. It has changed quite substantially since this tour began in St. John's, Newfoundland. But there are uh, several members who have been around for most of the game. Some newcomers will point out to you as play continues. And starting in goal for Canada this time, Bruce Daly, number 35. The Soviet Union, on the other hand, has had a roster that has stayed exactly the same since the tour began, with the exception of a change in goaltenders. And tonight it's number 29, Mikhail Veselnuk. Golikov, number 10, Marianov and Sashov, some of the more famous names. Of course, Helmut Balderas, number 19, and uh, 26 Semenov have been around and on previous tours. Head coach is Yuri Moisev. They've really got a coaching committee that handles this Soviet team. Moisev, Davidov, and Igor Tuzin. Series results so far with the Soviets. Moscow Dynamo winning games one through five. Canada coming up with two victories. And uh, then the Soviets coming back with two victories. So uh, as far as the series, if you're counting totals, Canada has not got a chance of, uh, of winning the series. But uh, as we say, a victory here tonight would uh, wrap things up rather nicely. Underway at the Forum in Montreal. It's Durden for the Soviets. Back in across his own line. Very quick skating hockey team. Merudinov checked off the puck at the Canadian blue line. This is Doucette for Canada. Benoit Doucette couldn't get it over for Sylvester. Now it gets to Sylvester. Into the corner behind the net and out in front and cleared into the neutral ice area. Canada regaining possession. Doucette goes in on the left side and he's taken out of the play. Sylvester in after the puck for Team Canada. And it finally comes to the Soviets who start out quickly. Pass on the right wing to Skurduk. Skurduk back for Perudinov, and he scores! Perudinov for the Soviets made it look very easy in the opening minutes of period number one. Well, Perudinov came down, was a delay man on the play. As you see here, Skurduk makes a nice little back pass. No one challenges, and the shot high on the six sides beats Dowie. Our defense just backed up, backed up, and let Perudinov come in and unload it. A big wrist shot. Now he seemed a little bit stunned by that one. And from the faceoff, it's back into the Canadian zone. Starting up on the left side, Terrion. Got it in for Darren Lowe. In after it, Dave Simpson. Canada trying to control. In the Soviet zone, out in front. And that time, Simpson put it just wide. Simpson, 16 for Canada, into the corner. And he's taken away. And out of the play, Soviets right back the attack quickly. This is Semenov going in with Balderas out in front. He couldn't get it through for Balderas. Into the corner for Canada, Don McLaren, number 22. McLaren comes up with it to the blue line for Darren Lowe. And ahead for Simpson. Simpson dumping it into the Soviet zone. And back for it. For the Soviets is Mikulczyk, number 16. Soviets in the center ice area in control. This is Balderas across the Canadian line. Balderas tried to feed it out in front. And there to break it up for Canada, Newell Brown. Brown gets it ahead for Boiver. Slipchenko now for the Soviets, number 24 for Antipov. And over in the open right wing for Canada, this is Mike Ridley in across the line. Ridley going after it. Slipchenko beats him to the puck. Soviets lead pass for Balderas. Center ice area. Balderas taken out of the play nicely that time by Baudouin. the Canadian line and fired just wide, claiming it down there for the Soviets. And Ferov, and Ferov for Balderas. Balderas tried to get it back to the point. Intercepted there by Ridley and cleared into the Soviet zone. Back for Payusa. Soviets on the attack. Antipov, number 25, lost it at the Canadian line. This is Rob Whistle. For Canada, Whistle ahead for Jack McKeegan, number eight. Soviets back in possession in their own zone. And Ferov, 21. Pass in the center ice zone. Zubrilchev going in on the left side. Zubrilchev worked himself out in front and scored. Zubrilchev walked right around the Canadian defense that time. Zubrilchev walks in all around. Roy, he, 
he is a very strong man. They feel he's probably the strongest player in the Soviet team. He walks around Roy, cuts in on Dowie, and just tucks a backhand in. Played it off the far post. So quickly, it's 2-0 for the Moscow Dynamo. This is game 10 of the series. Soviets on the attack once more. The Rodin in across the line. It comes back to him. He couldn't make a play on it. Now for the end, Jeff McKeegan. Over on the right side for Fabian Joseph. Joseph can't keep it across in Soviet territory. Keegan played it back. Joseph fires it into the Dynamo zone. Out in front, loose puck for Canada, getting set for the shot. Couldn't get it away that time. McKeegan into the corner now. Durden couldn't come up with it for the Soviets. Akulinen clears it ahead on the right side. Shashov, number 15. And he lost it. Now it's picked up for the Soviets by Vazikov. Vazikov right out in front. And a chance for Canada there. Jacques Sylvestre couldn't quite make it work. Durden. Pass on the right side. This is Sashov going in. Sashov for Rudnov. And his shot off the stick and in amongst the spectators. So the Soviet Dynamo in control of a 2 to nothing lead. We're early in the first period in Montreal. John, there you look at the Soviet hockey sticks, and they say that if you cut the, the shaft off by the blade, you can use those things as boomerangs. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. I don't know if those uh, would pass all the tests in the National Hockey League. What do you think? Well, they say their rule is one and a half centimeters, and most of those look a lot more than that. Face off in the Canadian zone, cleared to the neutral ice area, picked up back there by Mikulczyk for the Soviets. His pass intercepted. Sylvester tried to get it over on the right wing for Francois Sills. That play failed to materialize. Check for the Soviets. Now for Rudnov, it's center ice, lots of skating room across the Canadian line, stopped and played it ahead for Skurduk. This is Sills ahead for Sylvest across the Soviet line and back for it for the Moscow Dynamo. Glushenkov into the corner. Sills can't come up with it. Doucet goes in. Now Sills as well. But it comes loose for Varianov for the Soviets. Up the left side. Pass on the right wing. And Skurdak couldn't come down with it. For Canada. Mike Lawler into the corner. Along with Michelle Therrion. The point not quite out. Soviets back in control. Right out in front for Golikov. And he couldn't make it work. Ayuzov for the Soviets, back behind his own goal. A very slow start for Canada, Darcy. Yes, they are starting slow, and they got to get some action in the offensive zone. This is Darren Lowe, across the Soviet line, claimed quickly by Semenov. Tim Krug for Baudouin, and ahead of the left wing now for Darren Lowe. He just dumped it into the Soviet zone. Vasilnuk out of his net, couldn't make the play on it. This is Balderas. For the Soviets taking his time. Helmut Balderas. The Canadian line and across right around Darren Lowe. Balderas cleared it out in front. It was cleared aside that time by Yves Baudouin. And for Canada, a pass for Simpson. Center ice, he had to retreat it back and across his line. They call it offside. All right, so the Moscow Dynamo. And a 2-0 lead on Team Canada. Farm in Montreal. I'm John Wells along with Darcy Rota. The Moscow Dynamo very definitely in control of this hockey game. With a 2-0 lead on two quick goals. The first coming in the opening minute of play. And Team Canada off to a bit of a sluggish start in their 10th game of the series. On that last goal by the Soviets, uh, Serge Roy wasn't he supposed to play tonight. He's playing at a very, very sore back. And Dowie's not feeling very, very well. He was sick before the game. The Canadian zone played back to the point. Durden fired it just wide over to the other side now. And Bozikov takes his chance. Now he held on to that one. Dowie played for Canada in the game in Toronto a little while ago, and he had a shaky start in that game, if you recall, Darcy. He uh, led in one easy goal, and he was down quickly, and the Canadians came back to win. He, he did start slowly, but he came back to the player of the game then, and it was a real thrill for him because he's he's owned by the Toronto Maple Leafs and plays right now in St. Catharines. So, so to play well in Toronto, uh, couldn't play a better place for him. Soviets out in front of the Canadian goal is saved by Dowie. 
That time on Andy Pop. Long pass intended on the far side for Boy Bear. Play a little loose in the central ice area. This is Rob Whistle for Canada. Whistle retreating across his own line. Trying to get it ahead for Newell Brown. That one off escape. And the Soviets back in control. Durden, well back in his own zone as he sets it up for Bozikov. Bozikov, pass for Prerod and that didn't quite work. Now, Sashov for the Soviets. In against Whistle. Whistle has his man, but Akulinen trailing on the play. Came up with a puck. Akulinen into the corner, far side. Still with a puck. Cleared it to the side of the Canadian goal. Now Dowie feeds it along on the right side. And Mike Ridley into the central ice area. Soviets very definitely in control. Blushenkov ahead for Akulinen. And he has it taken away by Mike Lawler, number six. Back to the point and kept in by the Soviet Sashov now into the corner. And pressure being applied by Mike Lawler, number six for Canada. To the point, Glushenkov can't keep it in for the Soviets. Leads it ahead now for Mikulchek. Mikulchek. And this is Free Roden. Free Roden checked at the last second by Mike Lawler. And we'll have a face off inside the Canadian zone. Well, we asked Helmut Balderas, the veteran of the Soviet team, how his team would compare against an NHL team. You see, uh, he says that it could be 50-50 and it would be very interesting games and with a lot of fans and interesting for everybody, just for fans, for us and for NHL teams. We've been around this Soviet team uh, for a long enough time, Darcy. You can almost translate that yourself, can't you? <laughs> Not quite yet, but the <laughs> Canadians going uh, shorthanded right now. Whistle off for two minutes for slashing. All right, Soviets with the pressure on the Canadian zone. It's cleared down, and Simpson couldn't quite come up with it for Team Canada. Vasilnuk out to set it up. He plays it ahead on the right side for Skurduk. Now the Soviets on the power play, led by Varianov. Perudinov in across the Canadian line. Perfectly played right out in front. Dowie the save that time on Slipchenko trailing on the play. Now Slipchenko comes up with it once more. Perudinov now. And Team Canada grabbing control once more. This is Terrion. And it's out across the Canadian line. Fired back in and then dumped into the neutral ice area once more. Slipchenko for the Soviets. In four checking for Canada. What Canada uh, wants to do, they want to force them all over the ice and not let the Soviets set up anywhere. That's a very difficult task, though. Nice pass going through for Varianov at the Canadian line. Rudinov heads to the corner. It's back to the point. Slipchenko over on the far side. And the Soviets have it set up now. This is Peuza. Back to Slipchenko. Takes the shot. And Dowie saw that one at the last moment. The Soviets still in control now for Canada. This is Michelle Terrion. Got it to the line. Not quite out. Peuza for the Soviets. Into the corner. Back to Peuzov. Working right out in front. And that time it was blocked by Tim Krug. Krug takes his man out of the play. The puck left there for Michelle Terrion. Comes loose and it's fired to the line and across. As the Soviets go back to regroup. Slipchenko ahead now for Varianov. To Skuridek at the Canadian line with Varianov. And he fed it through. But not to Varianov. It's cleared. Not Right out though as it's off Semenov. Semenov in control. Back to the point for Bozikov. Bozikov winds up with a shot. And that one was blocked out in front. Backhanded out by Fabian Joseph. And Durden is forced to go back. Just two seconds left in the Canadian team penalty to whistle. And going in, Newell Brown. Brown played it out in front. And that time, Terrion or Boise, Boise Bear couldn't get a shot away. Here's a chance for Canada. Fired just wide by Boydouin. Boydouin. Mike Ridley for the Canadians. Number 14, Ridley. Being watched closely. Now back to the point. Whistle winds up with a shot. Rebound. And Vasilnuk stops both. There's going to be a penalty coming up for the Soviets, however. So Team Canada gets a power play opportunity. At 10 minutes, 9 seconds. 
It looked there a Golikov. He'll go off two minutes for tripping. He upset Newell Brown in front of the net. Canadians had good pressure. You'll see here, right here, comes in. Slipchenko had to make two uh, two saves, and uh, the Soviets give up their first manpower advantage to Canada. Face off in the Soviet zone, and winning the draw, Antipov into the corner. Now going in after Doucette, it's along the boards and kicked back to the point for Serge Roy. Roy over to the other side and winding up with a shot just wide was Whistle. This is Doucette for Canada. Back for Whistle. Over for Roy and Roy missed on his opportunity. Now the Soviets come out one on one. This is Zubrelchev number 18 against Rob Whistle and Whistle played him perfectly. Soviet shorthanded to the line. Doucette claiming it for Canada. Now he's Back behind his own line, regrouping and starting out. Benoit Doucette. Doucette tried to get it through for Ridley on the right side. That play neatly broken up by the Soviets. Now whistle. Whistle for Francois Sill. Over for Ridley, and Ridley couldn't play it. This is Zabrelchev going in. And he was checked from behind. Doucette for Ridley. Ridley at the Soviet line. Back for Doucette. Doucette winding up for the shot. It was off a stick and high over the glass. Canada having a tough time getting things going there, and the Soviets force you all over the ice, and they are a threat at any time to score, whether they're shorthand or even strength. You got one of their better penalty killers out there right now, Skurduk, who has scored one shorthanded goal in this series. One minute, two seconds left in the Canadian manpower advantage with Golikov in the box for the Moscow Dynamo. Face off in the Soviet zone. Marianov waved out of the circle. Low couldn't get the draw away from Skurduk and Payusa. And across the Canadian line and back there for it is Terrion. Terrion playing it ahead on the left side of the Canadian line and controlled there by the Soviets. Varianov neatly back and Skurduk at center ice just about had his man Varianov at the Canadian line. This is Dave Simpson back behind his own goal. Baudouin ahead on the right side for Darren Lowe. Lowe with McLaren in across the Soviet line for McLaren right out in front. No one was there for Team Canada. Just 20 seconds remain of the Canadian advantage and it's cleared out into the center ice area. Back there for Terrion. This is Michelle Terrion of the Soviet line and across. Left it back at the line. It's kept in momentarily by Baudouin, then flipped across the line and back in one time, and it's whistled down. A little look there at Baudouin, he's 18 years old, and as mentioned earlier, he played for the World Championship team uh, in Finland, and he's on a Washington Capital draft. And he's a native of Montreal. So this would be a big night for Yves Baudouin. Very exciting for him to play in front of uh, his home crowd. During that power play, the puck was in Canada's end of play for 52 seconds. So the Moscow Dynamo continue with a 2-0 advantage on Canada. For the faceoff just outside the Soviet line, that's Fabian Joseph, number nine for Canada, against Golikov of the Soviet Union. And quickly, the Moscow Dynamo in control. Now Canada in the central ice area, flipping it across the Soviet line. The Dynamo try the long pass left side for Paul Darris. He was cruising in. It failed to materialize. Now for Canada. Across the line, that's Jacques Sylvest. Into the corner, Joseph. Joseph for Sylvest. Sylvest working himself out in front. And Vasilnuk is down to make the save. Good chance for Canada there as Sylvest played it pretty well. Good forechecking by Joseph. And that's what you got to do when you play the Soviets. Get on him real quick as, it, as Joseph does here. Throws it out to Sylvest. And a good save by Vasilnuk with his pad. But good forechecking by Team Canada there, and you have to do that. That young man is the oldest player on the team. 36 years old. He's played very well for the, in this series. Kale Vasilnuk. Face off in the Soviet zone. And claiming it for Canada Ridley momentarily now. Newell Brown plays it around on the boards. And that time, Mike Lawler was caught out of position number six, so it's back in Canadian territory. Lawler failed to take that pass. Ridley comes back to claim it for Canada. Here's Ridley playing it ahead for Boyver. 
and he couldn't get to it ahead of Mikulchik. Kaloshenkov now for the Soviets. He lost it. Out in front. Cleared there for Brown, and he couldn't get in position to make a shot. Now here's a chance for Ridley. Ridley takes the shot, and Vasilnik the save. Ridley turned around and fired quickly, but Vasilnik was there to cover the corner. On the left side now for the Soviets, Zabrelchev. Zabrelchev got it out front, and Farov couldn't get there to get a scoring opportunity for the Moscow Dynamo. They lead it 2-0 on Team Canada. Newell Brown lost it at center ice, trailing on the play. It was Lawler. He fired it into the Soviet zone, and Vasilnuk out of his net to set it up. Six minutes, 15 seconds to play in the opening period, the Montreal Forum. Team Canada 85 against the Moscow Dynamo. Dynamo in control of a 2-0 lead. Skurduk for the Soviets. Got it ahead for Viriana, but it was offside at the Canadian line. The Lobo Masters Championship Tennis Series on TSN Wednesday, January the 9th. We'll have three days of coverage beginning at midnight Eastern time on January 9th. Neutral territory, claiming it for Canada. Tim Krug along the boards. He's taken out of the play by Varianov. Now for the Soviet Slipchenko, a pass at the Canadian blue line. Varianov couldn't accept it there. Baudouin for Canada. Now Doucette lost it to Varianov. It's very quick to move back to their own line, regroup quickly, and then move right in. The attack once more. Skurdak for Rudinov. And that play might have had one pass too many. As Rudinov looked for Varianov, number 12. Now, after a puck into the Soviet zone, Sills, he couldn't get to it. Skurdak waits for it on the far side. Neatly for Rudinov. And ahead for Golikov. Back for Rudinov. Back for Golikov. And back one more time for Slipchenko, who fired nifty passing by the Soviets for a good scoring opportunity. But Dowie made the save. Still in the Canadian zone, this is Helmut Balderas waiting for someone right out in front. And Golikov missed his opportunity. Cleared to the line and across. And the Soviets back to reclaim it near their own line. This is Bozikov. Bozikov ahead for Golikov. Down the left side, Golikov's sweet shot handled easily by Bruce Dowie. And they ever pass the puck. Here with Team Canada 85 on TSN. Back for a face-off in the Canadian zone to the right of Bruce Dowie. Played for the Toronto Marlboros for four years. From the face-off, Balderas got it. Fired a shot wide. Dowie thought that he might as well hang on to that one. This line of Golikov, Balderas, and Semenov has been the, the hottest line for this Soviet team all the way through. They've got 40 scoring points between the three of them. Face-off to the line and across after the puck for Canada. Darren Lowe, Lowe can't get to it. Now forces the Soviets in across the line. Here's a chance for Simpson, shot it just wide. Simpson, a blistering drive was wide. Now a shot, score, Canada, Serge Roy. It's two to one. No mistake about Roy letting that one go at all. What an excellent shot by Serge Roy. He's got a blistering shot from back there. He lets it go. Simpson missing that there. It comes back to Serge Roy here. And he just fires it, but that was all a result of Bozikov not getting the puck out of their own end. You see Simpson get that clearing pass, and he misses the shot. That goes back to Serge Roy, and he lets go with a high shot. You know, you got to admire Serge Roy. Today at their uh, pregame skate, he could not skate today because of a very sore back, and was a, was a doubtful for tonight's game. Unassisted to Serge Roy. Actually, Simpson did not miss the target by very much on the shot just preceding the first Canadian goal. So that should put a little more life into Team Canada after a sluggish start. Four minutes, 15 seconds to play in the opening period. And it's cleared into the Soviet zone by Francois Sill. Soviets quickly to the attack. Andy Pov taken off the puck. Terrion can't, can't come up with it. Now he does. This is Terrion playing it around behind the net for Mike Lawler. Lawler having some problems down there. And moving in to help out is Joseph, Fabian Joseph. Third out in front. Here's Andy Pop. Good save. Good save on Andy Pop that time by Bruce Dowie. Zabrelchev for the Soviets. 
looking for somewhere to go with it. Antipov comes up with it behind the net. Now Canada regaining control and getting it back to the Soviet line. Glushenkov. Canadians in for checking a little bit more now. This is Newell Brown. Brown played it over on the left side. At that time, Jack McKeegan was going the wrong way. Baudouin. The Soviet line. Here's another chance. Ridley going in. Shot. Basil looked to save. Ridley from point blank range. Now off the post. That time, Baudouin. Hasselnuck finally covers up in front of the Soviet goal. Good scoring chances for Canada right there. Good action by Team Canada here. Ridley breaks it all alone. And Hasselnuck just stands his ground, makes a good save on him, and the rebound comes back to Baudouin, and he lets go a shot right here and just hits the side of the net. He throws it in front. It's a scramble, and Canada just can't put it in. Ridley had a pretty good chance on the backhand just previous to that, and then he was out in front of the goal. Now we've got penalties coming up to Ridley, 14 for Canada, and to Mikulczyk for the Soviets. They both got their sticks out in front of the net. And, uh, Mike Ridley, University of Manitoba student, and Mikulczyk uh, is the leading penalty man in this tournament with 16 minutes. <laughs> for the Soviets into the Canadian zone. He's ridden out heavily by Baudouin. And on the left side now, there's a chance for Newell Brown. And Brown outskated for the puck that time by Slipchenko, 24. Marianov, the Canadian line across, he fired it wide. Slipchenko trailing on the play, kept it in. Marianov, back to the other point now. This is Bozikov, the shot. Dowie, the save. And for Canada, Boivere, Serge Boivere, Slipchenko can't keep it in at the line. And Bozikov is back in the center ice area for the Soviets. This is Bozikov to the line, across the shot, now the save. And the rebound picked up cleanly for Canada. This is McLaren. McLaren back for Simpson. And he played it over for Tim Krug, or for uh, Serge Roy, rather. Now back to Roy once more. He has the lone Canadian goal. Roy can't keep it in. And here's Helmut Balderas. Balderas, one man to beat. And neatly played by Rob Whistle. Balderas likes to cruise around that center ice area, doesn't he? He's always looking for the breakaway, and we'll be back in a moment. Moscow 2, Canada 1. A minute 35 to play in period one. 32 seconds remain in the penalties to... Mikulczyk and Mike Ridley. Anytime you have a four on four situation, John, you want to try and get your defenseman in on the play and get some three on two rushes. Back in the Canadian zone, this is Mike Lawler. He's being shadowed by Zabrilchev, gets away. Lawler, center ice, Soviet line. Still has it, and Lawler slipped as he went into the corner behind the Soviet goal, and the puck is underneath him, so we'll have a face off in the Soviet zone. Lawler showing some pretty good speed there, Dars. He's a member of the Montreal Canadiens, plays for their fire team in Sherbrooke, and he's a defensive type of player, but uh, showed a good burst of speed breaking around the Soviet net there, but he made a smart move by covering up the puck and not throwing the puck out blind and causing any type of turnover. Face out will be to the left of Vasselnuk. One minute, 10 seconds to play in the opening period. At center for Canada, Benoit Doucette. Both players a little anxious. Doucette gets the drop and couldn't get it back to the point. Now the Soviets on the attack. Pass for Zubrelchev on the right side. Zubrelchev trying to get around Lawler. Got it out in front. And the penalized players are back on the ice with 58 seconds to play in the opening period. Here comes Doucette for Canada. Doucette against Bozikov. Doucette back to the point. And Terrion works in deep for Canada. Into the final minute of the first period. Terrion. 
Over on the far side now for the Soviets, Zabrilchev. Zabrilchev. In for Mikulchek, he couldn't handle it. And Sills starts back for Canada. This is Francois Sill to the Soviet line across. Doucette trailing. Fired it into the corner. Now Mikulchek for the Soviets. Back into the center ice area. Quickly dumped in one more time by Baudouin. And Vasilnuk hangs on to a loose puck at the side of his net. 15 seconds left in the first period. Well, Canada started off very slowly, and talking with Dave King, he was worried about the start because you've got so many new players playing together for the first time. But after they, they regrouped, they played much better the last 10 minutes. Bill Brown at center for Canada. Crucial faceoff here with 15 seconds to play in the period. Get the draw here, Darcy. You got a chance to even things up. Well, it's a very big draw in the offensive zone. You can get it back to the point, shoot it on net, get a scramble or rebound or deflection. Back to the point. The shot. Basil took the save on Tim Krug that time. Into the corner. Nine seconds left. They freeze it along the boards. Now it comes loose. And Canada has to hurry to get a shot away. It's going to end 2-1 after one period of play. As Krug goes back to claim it just behind his own line. So, as we mentioned, a slow start for Canada. Two quick goals by the Soviets, including one in the opening minute of play. Well, the first two shots the Soviets took, they scored. But Canada played much better than the last 10 minutes and had many good scoring opportunities. So they've got to build from there and remain positive. Moscow out shooting Team Canada 11-9 in the opening period. And the Soviets in control of a one-goal lead at 2-1. There you see Bruce Dowie heading to the Team Canada bench. And that's the story of period one in Montreal. Getting ready for the second period of action at the Forum in Montreal with the Moscow Dynamo leading Team Canada 2-1. to one. I'm John Wells along with Darcy Rhoda. The Soviets opened the scoring quickly in the first 40 seconds of the opening period. But the Canadians came back with a goal in the 15-43 mark of the opening period. And that got things to within a goal. There's Dave King. And he's seen a lot of players come in and out of Team Canada dressing rooms in the past 10 days or so, Darcy. After tonight, we'll have seen 56 players, but one thing I'm sure Dave was telling his players that he wants them to force the Dynamo Hockey Club more when they're on the attack. They're, they're letting the Soviets set up in the Canadian end. You can't let them do that. They'll, they'll, they'll burn you. Barudinov and Zabrelchev gave the Soviets a 2-0 lead, and then Serge Roy closed the gap for Team Canada 15-34 in the first period. The shots on goal, even Moscow... Nine and Canada nine. But I thought maybe the Soviets had a couple more there, Dars. It looked you, like they controlled the game a little bit more. It, it appeared that way, especially the first part of the period. But Canada came back very well, and I'm sure they can build with that uh, last seven or eight minutes they had. As far as Dave King is concerned in this hockey game, he'd really like to win it on the basis of this being the tenth game in the series. He's using less players and trying to give some of the players that, that he knows can uh, can do it, and uh, so he's using just 18. He's using 18 players tonight, and talking with him before the game, he wants this game more than the others. Uh, he's usually, actually all 10 to assess players, but I guess you always want to win that last game, and uh, people remember more so the last game than maybe the first. So we're just about ready to get the second period underway at the Forum in Montreal. This is the 10th game in the series. The Moscow Dynamo have won seven. Team Canada has won twice. Once in Calgary, or once in Ottawa, I should say, and once at the Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. And there's Bruce Dowie, St. Catherine Saints, his home team these days. He wouldn't mind an opportunity to help out the Toronto Maple Leafs in their struggle these days. He has played uh, in the National League for the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, a year and a half ago. He played six games. And at the other end of the ice, Basil Nook, number 29, the Soviet veteran. He's 36 years of age. Face off now. And the second period underway as Doucette gets it back to the point. Picked up back there by Serge Roy. And Canadians try to move out of their zone quickly. Losing at that time was Rob Whistle. He has to retrace his steps, and he got it over for Sills. Ahead for Benoit Doucette, who dumped it into the Soviet zone. Pinching in to keep it in. Serge Roy for Team Canada number three. And along the board, Jacques Sylvest. Sylvest. 
comes up with the puck, tried to clear it out in front, and he failed for Rudinov now for the Soviets. Ahead for Skurdek. He just left it for Durden. Durden to the Canadian line. Shot right on. Dowie the save. Good, Good look there of Dave King. He's had a, a lot of players to assess throughout this 10 games, and he had his players playing a system that uh, may be unfiltered with most of them, but they're, they're following his game plan. And they've, the one thing that's impressed him throughout this series is how hard each player has worked and given 100% for his country. Well, a lot of young men would like to be part of this Canadian Olympic team three years from now. Not all of the players we've seen, or even many of the players we've seen out of the 56, will get a chance to play for that Olympic team. King is hopeful of finding four or five in this first assessment. For the Soviets now, this is Golikov. Line pass intercepted by Darren Lowe. Lowe in across the line, took the shot. And Golikov was back to block that one. Opportunity for Team Canada here. Lawler left it there. And the shot was fired by Therion. Team Canada back to regroup. This is McLaren. And now Darren Lowe. Mike Lawler over on the right side for Lowe to the Soviet line. And across, Lowe with a man out in front. Tried to feed it through. It was intercepted. Shot right on from there. And Simpson a try. As Vesselnook came up with two big saves. For Canada, Mike Lawler keeping it in at the line. And we'll have a face-off just inside the Soviet line. So good opportunities for Team Canada, but the score remains exactly the same. Face off will be just inside the Soviet blue line. Team Canada trailing the Moscow Dynamo 2-1. to one. For Canada, Newell Brown got the draw. In for Boyver. And the Soviets quickly out to the attack. This is Zabrelchev. Zabrelchev trying to work around Tim Krug. And Krug has him tied up behind the net. Coming up with the puck now, Baudouin. Surge, or rather E. Fodwan. For Canada now, Newell Brown fires it into the Soviet zone after it. Boyver. Now Brown right out in front for Boyver. He couldn't control it. Soviets clear to the line and across. Zabrelchev. Zabrelchev a lead pass going in and fair out the save. And Dowie comes up with a big one right there. Fine glove save by Dowie. Challenged the shooter very well there. Picks off the save. It's a nice pass here. Antipov comes in. Let's go a quick wrist shot. Dowie makes a nice glove. Comes out very well to challenge him. You mentioned earlier he was the star of that game at Maple Leaf Gardens. One of Canada's victories. A 4-3 win over this team from Moscow, the Dynamo. a little more patient in the early moments of this period, waiting for things to form up. Now the Soviets right back into the Canadian zone. And back towards Serge Roy against Sashov. Right out in front, Dowie the save once more. That one would have been well wide of the target, but Dowie held on anyway. You look there, Jack McKeegan plays with the Toronto Marlies, along with Fabian Joseph, his line mate tonight. They have played together, John, since Adam Hockey. They played together, they're from the city of Nova Scotia. There's Fabian Joseph there, and played a year in Victoria, and now play together for the Toronto Marlies. Inseparable. Into the Canadian zone after the faceoff. Starting out for Canada, Sills. Trying to backhand a pass over to the far side. Now the Soviets, led by Fazakov. His shot, well wide to Dowie. He set it up behind the net. For Team Canada, McKeegan ahead for Darren Lowe. Lowe has an opportunity here. And Lowe goes down. There's going to be a penalty to the Soviets as Lowe broke in. Really didn't have a clean opportunity to get a shot away. And a penalty coming up to the Soviets. One more look. Lowe made a beautiful inside move there around Vazakov. And Vazakov had to hook him to haul him down. See a nice move he makes the inside there. Vazakov gives him the hook. Or Lowe's in scot free. What a good move by Darren Lowe. Well, Vazikov didn't have much other, much other choice on the play. 
Canada with a power play, manpower advantage on the Soviets. Second power play for Canada, kept in at the line by Terrion. And the Soviets clear it out to the center ice area after Terrion fired it to the corner. Back for Team Canada, Baudouin all the way back behind Dowie as Canada waits for Benoit Doucette. Set up the right side. And the center ice into the middle over on the left wing. Boy there. Team Canada on the power play. This is Boy Bear. Back to the points. And Baudouin was out of position. Or Boy Bear played it in the wrong area. Canada's looking for those point shots on the power play. They got some great shooters back there. Francois Sill kept it in at the Soviet line. Now Boy Bear heads to the bench. Still 55 seconds left of the Canadian power play, but really, Team Canada has not had a good scoring opportunity yet. Coming slowly out of its own zone, Team Canada, led by Terrion, 19, into the corner. And after it is Simpson, 16 for Canada. Comes to Simpson, he tries to get it back to the point for Baudouin. Now Simpson once more, Baudouin. In for McLaren, McLaren behind the net. Darren Lowe, Lowe gets it back to the point for Terrion. And Basilnuk made the save that time. Golikov for the Soviets. Head for Semenov at the Canadian line for Golikov. Getting set for the shot. And just wide. Off the post. Center ice zone now. Semenov for the Soviets. Time has expired. The Canadian power play and Slipchenko in across the line. He's taken out of the play. Golikov kept it in at the line, but not for long as Darren Lowe recovers for Canada. Lowe dumping it into the Soviet zone. Vasilnuk set it up for Slipchenko behind the net. Slipchenko into the wide open central ice area. And going all the way down to touch it is Serge Roy. So it'll go all the way back to the Soviet zone. Moscow Dynamo in control of a 2-1 to -one hockey game in Montreal. Baby and Joseph awaiting a face-off in the Soviet zone. Dynamo with a goal in the first minute of play. Another one at the three-minute mark into a 2 to nothing lead on Canada in the opening period. Then Serge Roy got Canada back within a goal late in the opening period. 14.09 to play in the second period now. Face-off. And that time, Joseph... Couldn't come up with it for Team Canada. Soviets quickly to the attack as Antipov led the charge. Dirt in the shot just wide. And along the boards, Canada claiming it there. This is Fabian Joseph, number nine. For Team Canada, Joseph ahead for Jack McKeegan. McKeegan can't get it out across the line. Now he does. Zaprelchev back in for the Soviets. And Ferov shot Dowie the save. Barov, 21. Out of the line. And the Soviets keep it in, going back for it. Andy Pov, number 25 for the Moscow Dynamo. Bozikov trying to get in the neutral ice area. Played back to the line. And here comes Serge Roy for Canada. Roy, a pass ahead on the left wing for McKeegan. McKeegan, nowhere to go. Got it out in front. No one was there for Canada. This is Joseph. For Team Canada. Serge Roy moves in to try and keep it in the Soviet zone. Now Durden claims it for the Soviets. Durden to center ice. And the Canadian line still with the puck. Durden getting set for the shot. Now he to save. And flipped it to the corner. Jammed along the boards. And Ferov out in front. And Sashov couldn't get a shot. Number 15. This is then Ferov. After it once more, beating him to the puck is Fabian Joseph, number nine. Ahead on the boards to McKeegan. McKeegan into the neutral ice area where it's claimed by Glushenkov for the Soviet. The Canadian line once more. And Serge Roy flips it to the corner. Sasha into the corner after it. And Dowie is down. But back up now and 
He was taken well out of the play as he got caught wandering by the Soviets. Now he the save. Weak shot from the point. Back to the line. Glushenkov kept it in for the Moscow Dynamo. And back for Canada, Michelle Teron. Number 19, Teron working against Pre Roden. Let's out into the neutralized area. Glushenkov is back for the Soviets. Right now, the action's very tight. Both teams just kind of feeling each other out. Neither, good, neither team's getting good chances. Play back in the Canadian zone, and quickly out as Jacques Sylvestre went <laughs> ahead for Doucette. Doucette couldn't get to it. And for the Soviets now, Mikulchek, number 16. Breaking up the play for the Soviets was Sylvestre. This is Mike Lawler for Canada. Across the line. And in the neutral territory where it's picked up by Sills. Sills for Doucette. Doucette trying to get away now. Perudinov. Perudinov to Skirdak. Skirdak. Perudinov scores. And so quickly the Soviets into a 3-1 lead. Canada, a turned, play. Canada turned the puck over the blue line there. Doucette is intercepted here as you'll see. Checked. And they go in. Perudinov and Skirdak two on one. Makes a nice pass to Skirdak. He throws it back to Perudinov and he just throws it in the open net. So it is 3-1 for the Moscow Dynamo, and a smile on that Soviet face. He has now got six goals in this series, and he's been one of the better players throughout the 10 games. Le but it Dynamo That's the second of the night for Perudinov. It is 3-1 for the Moscow Dynamo, regrouping in their own zone. Marianov now to center ice. And across the Canadian line, Perudinov got the shot away. It was blocked by the Canadian defense on the attack now. Baudouin. Baudouin into the corner against Lachenko. Both players down. Puck comes loose, picked up by Varianov. He's got nowhere to go. Now across the line. Ahead for Peyuzov. Marianov once more. Now for Rudinov. Now a break for Canada. Ridley falls down as Canada had an opportunity for a two on one, but Ridley bumped into Newell Brown. Got it across the line, but it was in real, or in no real danger of coming up with a good scoring opportunity. Now Golikov, his shot blocked by Rob Whistle. Canada, McLaren over on the right side boards. McLaren for Krug. Krug looking for Newell Brown in the center ice zone. Durden was there to break it up for the Soviets. McLaren once more. Now Simpson. Simpson in for Rob or for Lowe. And Lowe's good scoring chance was spoiled by the Soviet defense. This is Balderas. One too many moves that time for the veteran helmet Balderas. Canada. Out across their own blue line. Into the Soviet zone once more. Backhanded in by Simpson. Bozikov for the Soviets starts back. Bozikov over on the right side for Balderas. Balderas into the corner, stops back for Bozikov. He had problems controlling it, but kept it in anyway. Now Durden fires one well wide. Bozikov can't get over to keep it in for the Soviets. Balderas cruising near the line. He has it. Fed it in for Golikov. That pass missed the target. Golikov coming up with it now out in front of the Canadian goal, and Whistle goes back for it. Whistle being shadowed by Semenov, kept in at the point by Durden. This is Serge Roy for Canada. Now Simpson back behind his own goal to set things up for Team Canada. 8.41 to play in the second period. Moscow Dynamo in a 3-1 lead. McLaren tried to feed it across for Boyver. This is McLaren back to the point. And Terrion is at the wrong position. So it's back into the Canadian zone. Chance for the Soviets, and they score quickly on it. The shot fired by Mikulchak and deflected in. Who got it, Darcy? Yes, and Farif gets the goal. Goes off his skate for the net, but a, but a poor clearing pass by Theory. And as you see, comes off the boards. Intercepted here. Let's go a shot and hits the 
and Farah skate goes between Dowie's legs. McKenna's got to make sure in those passes out of their own end. There's no winger there to get the pass, so you can't make that blind pass. Really no opportunity for the save for Dowie. Zabrilchev had another good chance to score there as he fired one just wide of Dowie. Now for the Canadian. Fabian Joseph, number nine. Working in, cleared it. Tried to clear it out in front. It's off a stick and out in front now. And Vasilnuk. Really not tested there. It was Zabrilchev dropping it back. Zabrilchev and Dowie had to make the save as the Soviets. A pretty scoring opportunity there, but Dowie held it up. Four to one, Moscow Dynamo leading Team Canada. We, we, we noticed Balderas here, always looking for goals. He's a late man coming back in, in his own end. He's always looking for a quick break, as you see here. Very tricky with the puck. A tremendous offensive threat for this Dynamo Hockey Club. He's a very effective player for the Soviets, no question about it. The veteran helmet, Balderas. He's Canada been not getting enough shots, Darcy. That's simply the problem right now. He's got to get the puck in the Soviet end. Do some forechecking, cause some turnovers. That's when the Soviets are the, at their weakest. Into the Soviet zone, where the Moscow Dynamo are in complete control. Free Roden now lost it. Ahead for Canada, Krug backhands it in across the Soviet line after a Jacques Silvest over on the far side for Francois Sills. And here's an opportunity for Sasha from the Soviets. Two on one, Sasha going in and can't get the backhand away. Played neatly by Krug. Sasha taken out of the play. The Canadian line picked up by Sylvest. Jack Sylvest ahead for Francois Sill. And Sills couldn't control it. This is Slipchenko for the Soviets. Sylvest now in along the boards with Sills and Slipchenko. And we'll have a face off. The Soviets are checking the Canadians very close, and it's very frustrating to be involved in something like that. Four to one, Moscow leading Team Canada. Yuri Moisev, who is actually the head coach of the Moscow Dynamo. He's ably assisted by Vitaly Davidoff and Igor Tuzin. Quite a personality. He's uh, very serious on the ice, but very friendly off the ice and does know a bit of English. He does know a bit? Does know a bit. I've had a few conversations with him and a uh, very interesting man. What did he ask you about, Darcy? He asked me about life in the National <laughs> Hockey League. <laughs> They're very interested, all the players, about uh, players and what it's like to play in the National Hockey League, and they do follow quite closely in the Soviet Union. A little look there at Mike Ridley, who's improved as this series has gone on. He's got two goals and two assists, but as this series progressed, he's been one of the better Canadian players. From the face off, it's back and across the Canadian line. Picked up by Rob Whistle. Whistle ahead. Now the Soviets back to take control. It's a Skurdak. Skurdak. Ridden out of the play, but Bozikov trailing gets the shot. Big rebound, Baryanov couldn't come up with it. Now for Team Canada. Pass ahead for Newell Brown. Brown couldn't control it. Bozikov back quickly. Here's Serge Roy working in. Roy goes to the back end, they score. Roy went to the back end, and I think it was tipped in by Boyver. Fine play by Serge Roy. He pitches in at the blue line, intercepts the clearing pass. You see the pass come around here. He pinches right here. Comes in on his backhand. Let go, let's go a backhand. Boisvert deflects it into the corner to beat Vazelnuk. What a fine effort there. Boisvert tips it in. Boisvert plays for Sherbrooke. There's 21 goals with Sherbrooke, a farm team from Montreal Canadiens. So that gets it back to a two-goal advantage for the Moscow Dynamo. Good opportunity for Dave Simpson out in front. Simpson fired it just wide. A little more pressure from Team Canada now, but the Soviets cleared into the center ice area. Shell Therion. Now Golikov. Opportunity for Moscow Dynamo. He lost the puck. Semenov trailing. 
Comes up with it into the corner. Terion is in working against Semenov. Back to the point. Mikulchik. Balderas. Balderas couldn't get a shot. And here comes Canada. McLaren over on the right side. Good move to get around the defense. McLaren a good shot and Basilnuk the save. Canada still with the pressure on. This is Dave Simpson. Simpson winds up with a drive. That one just wide of the target. Now Darren Lowe out in front for Simpson. He was taken out of the play. Chance for Balderas. One on one. Balderas going against Terrion. Balderas fired it wide. Lushenkov for Balderas. And here's Lowe ahead for Simpson. He couldn't take the pass. That goal has really sparked Canada right now. They've had a couple of good chances, but they can't get caught pinching too much or they'll get burnt. Soviets very quick to go from offense to defense. Tim Krug in along the boards, working against Enferov. Now an opportunity for Canada. Two on one. As Doucette tried to get it over for Jacques Sylvest. Into the corner now for Sylvest. Held along the boards. And Sylvest was wondering why there wasn't a whistle. Kept in for Canada, at least momentarily by Baudouin. Now ahead on the right side. Zubrelchev for the Soviets. Zubrelchev tried to play it back for Peusov. Canada claims the puck. Francois Sill ahead for Sylvest and back for Sill. Now Doucette and back to Sill. Shot. And that one was deflected. So a good chance for Canada there. At least they made it look like they were moving the puck extremely well. It's 4-2. The Moscow Dynamo leading Canada. Face off is just inside the Soviet blue line. Canada trying to get back into the game. They trail it 4-2. 2-1 after one period of play. It's now 4-2. The Soviets at one point had a 4-1 lead. So Team Canada inching back. Soviets regroup and center ice. Bozikov head on the left side for Prerodin. He couldn't get to it. Now Whistle plays it ahead for Ridley. Neatly played out the boards by Ridley for Newell Brown. Brown has a man on the right side. Bozier, and he fired the shot the save by Basildog. Back to the point. Whistle keeps it in. Newell Brown can't. And Serge Roy regroups for Canada the center ice zone. Bozikov. Chance for Canada here working in. Whistle. His backhand off a skate. Played behind the net by Newell Brown. Out in front the shot right on. Boy Bear. Kept in by Ridley. Ridley played very well for Canada in this game. Looks stronger as the series has gone along. Darcy, Mike Ridley from U of M. He's been a real pleasant surprise for this team, and he got a goal and it seemed to really spark him. Simpson plays it off the boards for Serge Roy at the right point. Roy couldn't make the play. Now it's back for McLaren. Canadians have controlled better since they scored that last goal, but haven't had the brilliant scoring opportunities. Out in front, low couldn't come in contact with it for Canada. Soviets led by Skurduk start back. Canadian line, Skurdak, forced out of the play, into the corner by Don McLaren. Loose for Simpson. Simpson to the point, now it's across the line. Soviets back in control, this is Glushenkov. And over on the right side for, for Rudnov. For the Soviets. The Canadian line circles back. Skurdak now. Skurdak has some open territory. Can't get a shot away. Rudnock working against Mike Lawler. And they're holding along the boards for a face-off. Here with the Sports Network, TSN. Back for a face-off in the Canadian zone to the right of Bruce Dowie. And Darcy, the Canadians have had a little more pressure in recent moments of this second period. Well, that goal by Canadians was really seemed to really spark them, and they're playing quite well now. And if they get another goal before the period, seven off in the center ice area. 
Maybe in line left it for Golikov. Golikov working around out in front. And no one at the point for the Soviets. As Bozikov had lost his balance. This is Golikov. Last minute of play in the second period. Golikov, the Canadian line and across, poked out across the line. Good defensive maneuver by Terryon. Off the boards, the shot right on Dally. This is Lawler. Now ahead for Sylvester on the right side for Doucette. Doucette can't control it. Sylvester over to help out. Jacques Sylvester working against Slipchenko. Golikov bounced it off the glass, and it's all the way down to the Canadian zone with 21 seconds to play in the second period. The Soviets in control of a two-goal lead for Canada now. Baudouin. Now just four seconds left in the period. Balderas plays it over to an open wing. No one was there. And the Soviets will take a two-goal lead to the dressing room after two. Much better period by Team Canada. They seem to be much more confident in that period. And can regroup and come out, hopefully score two goals and get back in this thing. Soviets out shooting Canada 10 to 7 in the second period for a two period total of 21 to 16 for the Moscow Dynamo leading Team Canada. And there's the score after two in Montreal. Back at the Montreal Forum, John Wells along with Darcy Rhoda, Moscow Dynamo leading Team Canada 4 to 2 after two periods of play. And Perutnov has both goals for the, or two goals for the Soviets. He has two goals and has only two shots of the game. On the other hand, Darcy, as far as Team Canada is concerned, the power play did not work very effectively whatsoever. Four minutes of power play advantage. 137 of that time was spent in its own, in Team Canada's zone. They've had a lot of difficulty tonight, John, getting things going on the power play, but this Soviet hockey team is so experienced. The average age, although Canada has eight players with pro experience in their lineup, is 21.4 years, and with the Soviets, their average age is 26.4 years, which is along similar lines to a National Hockey League team, and I'm sure this team could compete and do well. Well, I think we have to mention once more to people who haven't been with us for the whole series the fact that this is a very experimental team, an assessment team for Dave King as he looks to find the people that might be able to help his Team Canada 88 program when, uh, when Canada has an Olympic team to put together for a very crucial Olympic year with the games being in Calgary. So this is really the first step in finding out who can play and who might be available to play. They're hoping to get, uh, as you mentioned earlier, three or four players of the 56 that played uh, that will be part of the Olympic program. And it's gonna be a tremendous experience for all the players involved. They will train three weeks in Europe next August and then train and officially be out of Calgary where they'll go to school and train. There's the scoring summary for period number two for Rudinov at 8.48. The Soviets added one more for and Ferov 11.45. And Bulver scored his first goal of the series for Team Canada at 13.55. Shots on goal 10 to 7. Moscow leading Team Canada for a two period total of 21 to 16. So the Soviets very definitely in control. We did talk at one point during the telecast in the second period there, Darcy, that Canadians had to get more shots on goal. And, and actually, in the latter stages of the period, they did. But uh, early in the period, they were having problems. Well, they frustrate, frustrate you so much, the Soviets. They check it closely. And I'm sure a lot of players have been very frustrated throughout this series. I know talking with Dave Simpson, who has not scored a goal, but he's played very well. He says it's uh, very tough at times to play this team because they never give you time to shoot the puck. And when you get a chance, you got to get it away very, very quickly. Mikhail Faselnuk. In goal for the Soviets once more. He's the veteran of the Soviet goaltending tandem. Yuri Nikitin is 23. Vasilnuk is 36. And in goal for Canada, making his third start. He has one win and two losses. Making his fourth start, I should say, Bruce Dowie. And uh, Dowie is a product of the Toronto Marlboros. Face off is jammed along the boards in the Soviet zone by Francois Sills. And that's where the face off will be to the Left of Vassal Nook. Ryan up there. He's played uh, very well. He's their top scorer last year. He's got four goals and four assists in this 10-game series. And he goes against Benoit Doucette. 
from the faceoff. Vasiluk had to make the save, steered it to the right. It's back into the Soviet zone. This is Francois Sill with a chance to center it out in front and got it for Sylvest. Sylvest fanned on the shot. Soviets. The attack once more. Skurduk losing it to Serge Roy, and Roy plays it back for Rob Whistle as the Canadians regroup. Whistle ahead for Sills. Sills trying to get it back for Doucette. The shot, a blistering drive that time from Rob Whistle. And the loose puck comes all the way down the ice. Perutinov has a chance for the Soviets going in. Takes the shot. Dowie the save as Perutinov walked in alone. Now Perutinov comes up with a loose puck. This is Sylvest ahead for Sills. Sills to Doucette. Doucette can't get it out across the line. I guess he did because they whistle it down as the Soviets pushed it back across to the face off outside the Canadian line. Oh, it all resulted because of a shot by Rob Whistle that missed the net, hit the glass, and bounced off the backboards, and Perutinov broke out on a semi-breakaway there. Golikov against Newell Brown. Brown got the draw. Canadians clear to the central zone. This is Glushenkov. Soviets the attack. Long shot. Gloved by Dowie. Dowie set it up for Therion. Michelle Therion ahead for Brown. Brown can't get to a return pass from Boyver. Helmet Balderas for the Soviets around behind his own goal to the line. And across. Back for it for Canada. Boyver. Now Mike Lawler. This is Newell Brown. Brown takes a return pass, goes in on the left side. Brown with a chance to center it, couldn't get it out. It's along the boards and held there. Brown against Semenov. Now Golikov steps in and we'll have a face off in the Soviet zone. Canada still trailing by two here with the Sports Network, TSN. Face off in the Soviet zone to the right of Mikhail Vasilnuk. Canada, a chance there. And Vasilnuk held it out. Back to the Canadian line. And the Soviets get it across, but it's offside. Zubrilchev slipping it across. One Soviet player had fallen. And Ferov was down. An interesting note about this Moscow Dynamo team, John. They're all militia or regular policemen over in Moscow. KGB. Secret Service? Could be. <laughs> they wouldn't tell me that. I thought you knew everything about this team. <laughs> Apparently it's a secret. That's why they wouldn't tell you. <laughs> From the faceoff, and Farov across the Canadian line. Now it's pushed out by Lowe and back in. So we'll have another faceoff just outside the Canadian blue line. We've run out of players from the Darcy Rota Hockey School on Team Canada. A couple of players well, we from your old hockey school in Prince George. Were we had, we had Ian Ramsey team. and we had Ryan Stewart. Both played very well, but I only had each one for 10 days. You did a marvelous job with them in 10 <laughs> days, Darcy. All the way up to Team Canada. Good opportunity for Canada there as Darren Lowe fired it high and wide out in front. Basil Nook to save. Simpson going for it. Couldn't come up with it. Now, Pre Roden for a Koolinen and Canada another opportunity here's McLaren going in McLaren had Basil Nook right out of the nets and couldn't get it high enough he's trying to catch up with that one little Darcy got a little away from him good move by McLaren he broke in on his off wing so watch here and he makes a nice little move cuts it in his backhand Basil Nook comes out and challenges him way out of his nets and Balderas are roommates on the road and they're always together. They're the two oldest guys in the team and they're quite uh, interesting guys and they laugh and joke. Balderas is a very interesting character, no doubt about that. Boy there for Canada in the corner. Left it there. This is Fabian Joseph. Back for Boy Vare, now along the boards. Held there. Glushenkov, now it comes free. And it's ahead for Perudinov. Perudinov down the right wing. Left it there for Skurdek. Skurdek. Circling back to the line. Over the other side, Mikulczyk fired it well wide. Skurda picking up the rebound, turned and fired it into the corner. This is for Rudinov for the Soviets. They've got some pressure on now. Skurda from the point works himself in, 
and he's taken out of the play by Serge Roy. Roy playing quite effective for Team Canada. Quite effectively, I should say. Now for the Soviets. Varianov can't get a shot away. This is into the corner now for Serge Roy. Big collision down along the boards. And Boy Bear ran into Mikulchuk, and Mikulchuk apparently got the worst, worst of it. He's headed to the bench. Canadians to the Soviet line and across. Joseph can't come up with it for Canada. Soviets start back. Led by Slipchenko at center ice. He circles back to his own line. Payusov now. Slipchenko. And back to Payusov. Helmet ball there is down the left side. Speedy, good shot on the backhand. And Dowie makes the save. Out in front again. And in behind the goal for Golikov. Golikov tried to beat it out in front. It's steered aside by Doucette. Loose puck on the boards, claimed by the Soviets. Semenov, back to the point. Payusov backhands it wide. Sylvester for Canada, across the line, but it's claimed quickly by the Soviet Slipchenko. Over for Semenov, loose in the center ice area. Sylvester can't get to it, now he does. Sylvester to the Soviet line and across. Working against Payusov, it's still inside the Soviet line. Chance for Canada, and Sills can't get a good scoring opportunity or work any closer. Helmut Balderas comes up with it for the Soviets. Over on the left side, and a long pass to the right wing that failed to materialize. Slavchenko back to his own line. Ahead for Bozikov. Chance for Canada. Newell Brown sends Ridley in. Ridley couldn't get control. Brown comes up with it. Back to the point. Brugge the shot, fired well wide. In for Canada, Boyver. Boyver working well. And over to the left wing side, out in front, back to the point. Good shot. And Vasselnook made the save on Baudouin. Boyver, number 12, working along the boards. And also in helping out for Canada, Newell Brown. And they hold it long enough for a face off of the Moscow Dynamo Zone. Here with the Sports Network, TSN. The 14 minutes, 19 seconds to play in period three. The Dynamo in control of a two-goal two goal lead on Team Canada. Face off in the Soviet zone. And controlling it for Canada, McLaren, at least momentarily, but the Soviets break out. Akulinen tried a right-wing pass for Preroden. Long pass now on the right side. Intended that time for Darren Lowe. Now the Soviet Durden works in, takes the shot just wide. Durden once more working against McLaren on the board. Soviets back to the line. Volzikov the shot saved by Dowie. Loose puck just trickled across behind Dowie that time. Volzikov for the Soviets. Intended that one for Akulinen, broken up by Serge Roy. Now it's Rob Whistle for Canada. Whistle to his own line into center ice. Backhand pass ahead for low, low. Got it over McLaren going right in. Simpson. Dave Simpson nicely played. It's four to three. Well, that's Dave Simpson's first goal of this series. And he's he's played very well. He just had unfortunate luck, but he comes out of your screen. And walks in, makes a nice little move for his forehand, and beats Vasselnuk. It's a nice pass here from Darren Lowe. Go to McLaren, over to Simpson, and he goes in, makes a nice move to his forehand, pulls onto the puck, into the net. Big goal for Team Canada. I'm sure that young man's very relieved. Finally scores first goal. The Team Canada captain. <laughs> Dave Simpson. Canada on the attack again. Vasselnook had to make a save and clear it aside. Sills was alone out in front. Soviets. Varianov, long shot. Dowie didn't have to play it. Mike Lawler for Team Canada. 
So the goal for Simpson at 6.33. That makes it a one-goal difference in the hockey game. Team Canada with lots of time left in the third. Face off. Just outside the Canadian line, now Canada trying to close the gap even more and get this hockey game even at four with 12.49 to play. Third period, Canada on the move. Led by Terrion, now the Soviets led by their number 19, Balderas, and across the line, Balderas only one shot on goal, got it back for Golikov. And Doucette starts out. Left wing pass for Sills, Doucette into the corner after it. Sills fired it just wide, now Sills. Around behind the net for Jacques Sylvestre. Sylvestre taken out of the play by Peyuzov. Jammed along the boards. Now it comes free out in front for Doucette. And he couldn't control it. Balderas leads the Moscow Dynamo to the Canadian line. Check there. And Doucette has it for Canada. Doucette leaving it for Therion. Therion still with the puck. Over for Lawler. As both teams change on the move. Pass intended for Ridley goes all the way down the ice. And down for it as Newell Brown couldn't get to it. Soviets. Helmut Balderas around behind the net. Kept in for Canada by Baudouin. This is Poivre for Canada number 12. Poivre couldn't take that pass. Soviets start up. Center ice area. Nicely played by Tim Krug of Team Canada. Boyver on the left side. And he couldn't get around Slipchenko for the Soviets. Slipchenko ahead for Zubrelchev. And for Enferov, back to the line, Mikulchek. And a two-on-one opportunity for Canada. Ridley plays it over for low. And that play went offside at the Soviet line. This style of hockey is so different, John, from the National Hockey League. It seems like you get in a rhythm going back and forth. Very few whistles, and the Soviets very rarely go offside. Only one icing call all night long. That's quite a fact right there. They love that control game, the Moscow Dynamo Hockey Club. Faceoff will be just outside the Soviet line with 11.06 to play. 4-3, Canada trailing the Moscow Dynamo. And this is the final game in a 10-game cross-Canada series for the Dynamo against Team Canada 85. On the line, big shot, big save. A shot from Mikulchuk, the save by Dowie. Here's Simpson across the line to the open man on the far side. Out of the point, it's kept in. Good play by Baudouin. And Baudouin keeps it in once more, but the Soviets play it behind their own line and start back. Zabrilchev down the right side, trying to work around through. Zabrilchev fired it, and Dowie made the save on the short side. Four to three. Third period continues in a moment. Face off in the Team Canada zone to the left of Bruce Dowie. Mariana for the Soviets. In the center ice, or in the face-off circle. That time, Fabian Joseph got it for Team Canada. Long pass. From Boyver intercepted. Team Canada back to the attack, however. McKeegan in across the line. And claiming it there, Mikulchuk back for the Soviets. Ahead for Glushenkov. Glushenkov lost it in the center ice zone. This is Whistle. Whistle. Head for Boyver, Canadians at the line. And working in, Fabian Joseph lost it there. Glushenkov for the Soviets. They're rude enough. Left wing pass for Varianov. Back in the Canadian zone. This is Joseph. Long pass on the right side for Sills. Now Sills can't get it across the line. Rob Whistle back behind his blue line to regroup for Team Canada. Over for Lawler. Lawler ahead for Sylvester. And it's back for Lawler, leading the attack now for Canada. Lawler left it there. Shot right on Vasilnuk. Francois Sills almost evened it. Garudna for the Soviets. Back for Slipchenko. 
Lipchenko for Golikov, the Canadian line. Golikov in for Balderas. Balderas over skated it. They use up. Off the boards, Canada claims it there. This is Mike Lawler. Lawler has some problems. Now the Soviets with the Canadian line and across, led there by Golikov for Slipchenko. Slipchenko out in front, and Payuza for the Soviets works in for the point. His shot, blistering drive just wide. Slipchenko, his shot wide of the mark. Semenov for the Soviets. Dynamo with pressure on the Canadians in their own zone. Now Benoit Doucette for Canada. Ahead for Sills, who tried to golf it out of the Canadian zone. Along the boards, finally comes loose for Golikov for Payusov. Working in Payusov. The backhand pass for Golikov going right out front. Dowie the save. It's cleared by Doucette. Good save by Bruce Dowie. It's 4-3. Canada trying to get the equalizer against the Moscow Dynamo. And this is Doucette to the Soviet line and across. It's cleared down into the Canadian zone and backboard. For Canada, Baudois. Side cleared in by Newell Brown in the corner and after it. Boy Bear for Canada. Ridley around behind the net. Newell Brown comes up with it for Canada. No one back at the point. Now the shot by Podwan. Just wide. This is Ridley trying to get it out in front and couldn't get it there. 7.39 to play in the third period. A one-goal hockey game as the Dynamo lead Team Canada 4-3. to three. Here's Newell Brown. Brown over for Lowe on the left side. Lowe across the line, stops, tried to clear it out in front for Brown. It's back to the point. Here's Krug's shot, a blistering drive, fired wide. Baudouin fired just wide from the other point. Kept in for Team Canada by Krug. Out in front is Newell Brown taking the shot away. And fired just wide that time by Darren Lowe. Great opportunity for Canada to get even with 7.09 to play. For Canada, Baudouin. Gets it into the Soviet zone. Good action now, third period. Canada has come close to tying things up. Back to the point, long shot just wide for Simpson. And the Soviets clear it all the way down. It'll be icing called against the Soviet Union. Great action in the third period as Canada tries to get even. The Soviets lead by one with 6.47 to play. All right, into the final seven minutes, 6.47 to play. Moscow Dynamo leading Team Canada 4-3. to three. Face off in the Soviet zone. That's Simpson at center ice for Canada. He got the draw. It was fired wide by McLaren. Slipchenko for the Soviets. Ahead for Varianov on the right wing. Now Skurdek. He lost it. Good back checking by Simpson. And leading the Canadian attack now, Rob Whistle to the Soviet line. Varianov. Clears it into the center ice area. Canada back to regroup. Serge Roy dumps it in. It'll be offside. And the action a little bit better in this stage of the third period, Mr. Rota. On Dave Simpson's goal there, Rob Whistle made the fine play to get the puck up. And so many times, the third man in the play, you know, never gets credit for the for the goal. But Rob Whistle made a great play there. Get the puck up to, to Lowell McLaren, who threw it over to Simpson and made a great move on the goal. Payusa there, I talked to him before the game tonight. It's his first game in the Montreal form. <laughs> I don't know, your Russian is a lot better than, than mine, I'll tell you that. I just said, first game in Montreal, and he nodded his head yes. I, see. I guess they understand you. You're talking <laughs> hockey. Good check on the board. Skurduk taken out of the play for Rudinov in for checking for the Soviets. This is Rob Whistle for Canada. Whistle having some problems. Now Serge Roy moves in for... A little moral support for Rudinov, still with an opportunity to play the puck. Now the Soviet Skurdek coming up with it. Skurdek turning quickly. Whistle stolen away from Skurdek momentarily. Soviets in control until McLaren starts back. McLaren with low. McLaren for low on the right side. Low dropped it back for Simpson. Simpson couldn't make a play. There's a chance for Skurdek and the Soviets going in all alone and checked neatly from behind. Mike Lawler, excellent speed there. Came back, Skurdak was going in all alone, never got his shot away. McLaren for Canada, inside the Soviet line. Lost it there to Glushenkov. Glushenkov over for Helmut Balderas on the left wing. Balderas taken out of the play, puck in the neutral ice area. Vazikov for the Soviets with 5.08 to play, third period. Glushenkov going in, Balderas was right there, couldn't get a shot away. Lawler for Canada. 
into the center ice area. Picked up by Boyvere. Boyvere going in. He's taken out of the play. And no penalty was called. I guess that's fair. No penalty going either way. For a Soviet chance a little bit earlier. Krug into the line. The Soviet blue line. He's across it now. Dumped it into the corner in Canada. Looks for fresh troops as the Soviets regroup and start back. Four minutes and 33 seconds to play. Third period. Chance for Canada. Silvest played it to what he thought was an open wing. This is Sills going in. He's taken out. And Bozikov clears it to center ice for Canada. Baudouin. Baudouin in across the line. In for Silvest. And Glushenkov with Silvest. Jamming along the boards behind the Soviet goal. 4 12 to play. Canada needs a goal to get even. See, it'd be nice to see Team Canada get the equalizer here, and we'd have a furious four, four final minutes of play in this series. They're very they're pressing real well and right now. They've had some great chances to score, and hopefully they'll do it. At center for Canada, Benoit Doucette. Into the corner, Doucette is after it. Pushed off the puck by Slipchenko. Doucette can't come up with it. For the Soviets, Andy Pav. Over on the right side for Zabrilchev. Zabrilchev couldn't make the play. This is Doucette for Canada. Played it over for Sills. The pass never quite got there. Tim Krug back to his own line. Over for Baudouin. 3.44 to play. Final period. Final game of the series. 4-3. The Soviets leading Team Canada. And after it's Jacques Sylvest. Sylvest played it around for Doucette. And over for Sills now. Sills turned and fired. That off a leg and claimed by the Moscow Dynamo. Center ice area now. This is Serge Roy starting the attack for Canada. Blistering drive just wide. It was a great shot. Roy scored a goal for Canada earlier in the contest. Doucette can't come up with it. Zabrilchev does for the Soviets. Nice backhand pass as the Soviets start out. And Ferov, and he's ridden out heartily by Rob Whistle. Zabrilchev out in front. It's off whistle. Mikulczyk made the play, but Canada claimed the puck. And across the Canadian line with 2.43 to play. This is Serge Roy. Pass on the left side. For Newell Brown. And Brown is down. Now Mike Ridley comes up with it. It's whistled down after getting trapped under Newell Brown of Team Canada. And with 2.30 to go, Canada still trails by a goal. Mike Ridley from the University of Manitoba is playing very well, and he's a tremendous forechecker. He's scored a couple goals in this series because of his forechecking ability and getting in, causing the turnovers. Well, another all-important face-off for Team Canada in the Soviet zone. Dave King sends Newell Brown to center for this one. Got it back, shot, and that was blocked somewhere between the point where it was fired by Mike Lawler and the goaltender, Vasilnuk. Soviets so quick all the way down to the Canadian zone. Never really got a scoring opportunity out of it. It's offside as the Moscow Dynamo cleared it across that Canadian line. Newell Brown did a great job of getting that draw back, and unfortunate it didn't get through, but uh, Canada's fortunate there because the Soviets broke out three on two, and Canada defense did a great job of stopping them. Bruce Dowie, his third start, he's one and one in goal for Team Canada. Two minutes, 16 seconds to play in the final period. Soviets out in front by a goal, it's four to three. Brown won another draw. This is Mike Ridley taking over for Canada. Ridley got it over for Brown. Brown dumped it into the Soviet zone. That's Ridley going after it. Golikov claimed it for the Soviets. And Golikov starts back. A pass for Peyuzov. Peyuzov to the line. Left it for Golikov. He scores. And how quickly the Soviets can take control of a hockey game. That makes it 5-3. Golikov coming up with a big goal for the Moscow Dynamo. Peusa makes a rush here, he makes a move, he loses control of the puck here, flips over his stick, and it's on its edge, and a, 
like a knuckleball and fool, fools Dowie. Watch him lose control here. Gets up on his edge. Bang. And that looks like a knuckleball if you're a batter, and it's uh, tough to get to catch if you're a goaltender. Well, that makes it five to three. Less than two minutes to play. So Canada needs two for a tie now. And that's starting to look just a little bit impossible. So it's a very tough to play catch up with. Here's Balderas going in. And a 50 play by Bodwan on Balderas. Over for Simpson from low and across the Soviet blue line. But back there, the Moscow Dynamo in control. This is Simpson. Short pass for low. Low. Over for McLaren. Back for low. The shot. And Basselnook. Got a stick on that one. Played it off the glass. Bayusov. Taken out now. Semenov. Pass to Balderas. Across a couple of lines. So we'll... Have a face out just outside the Soviet line with a minute five to play. After game, game nine, I had a conversation with Helmut Balderas. <laughs> he told me he's going to retire from Soviet hockey in March and probably go to Austria or Finland next year. Did you use an interpreter at all or just... Uh... Actually, quite surprising. His English isn't too bad. I think Soviet hockey players know a little more English than we give them credit for at times. No I, was asking, about that. I was asking about the Canada Cup and he's enjoyed playing that a uh, few times and he's been uh, a national team member for five years. He's quite an interesting personality. End of the final minute now. Bodwan for Canada to his own line and across he flips it in. Back off the boards for Beauvert. And Dowie is out of the net. Canada has the extra attacker out there. Zabrilchev can't get it out across the line. Vasilnuk makes the save. And the faceoff will be to his right. 38 seconds to play in the final period. And there's the position once occupied by Bruce Dowie. First time I've seen the full goaltender in the series. It is the first time, and he stated to us before the game that he wanted to win this game very badly. And it's just unfortunate Canada got off to the slow start first two shots went in the net but a big face off they got the puck in the Soviet end and hopefully you can get the draw and go from there well the Canadians trying to set this one up to their best advantage right now as Benoit Doucette is calling the signals and skating into the face off circle the left point Krug Krug winds up with a shot the save by Vasselnuk in behind the goal. This is Doucette scores. 29 seconds on the clock. And Juan Doucette gets Canada within a goal. What do you think, Darsh? Big goal for Doucette. His seventh goal of this series, and he's been playing very well throughout. But Simpson gets the puck here, tries to throw it out, it hits Vasselnik's stick, and Doucette just one times it as the goaltender's down. Look here. Simpson throws it out, hits a goalie stick, and Doucette just one times it to the far side. You've got to just direct all your shots towards the goal here. Comes out, Doucette in a good scoring position, just one times it from the slot. Canada with 29 seconds, still have lots of time to tie this baby up. No overtime, though. Do not play overtime in a tournament like this. All right, for Team Canada, time ticking away. 22 seconds on the clock. Bazakov for the Soviets, for Skuridak. And ahead for Farudinov. Farudinov has a man open. Varianov won't miss. He does. He hit the post. All right, 11 seconds on the clock. And this is the last chance for Sills. Left it there for Simpson. Canada has run out of time in this one. Three, two, one. And it's over. The final score will read. To four for the Moscow Dynamo over Team Canada. There's the winning goaltender, Mikhail Fasselnuk. And the Soviets have come to Canada in this series and won it rather handily, eight games to two. Shots on goal in the third period for the Moscow Dynamo, eight for Canada, 11 for a three period total, 29 to seven, favoring the Soviets. Well, it's just unfortunate Canada got off to a slow start here. 
Garyanov misses two great chances to score in the open net. One hits the post there, and the other with just a second or so left, he misses the net. He was just shaking his head. So that's what the final will read in this final game of the series. And a very experienced Moscow Dynamo team coming to Canada and scoring victories in eight of ten games as far as Team Canada is concerned. It was uh, a put-together team building for 1988 and not for 1985, so I suppose the experience is one of who might be ready and able to play an international competition in the next couple of years. Well, it is Dave King and coaching staff's first look and first assessment at Olympic hopefuls. And the one thing that Dave told me that he was very happy at the output of the Canadian players. They worked very hard in practice and in the games. And as you said, John, they were against a very experienced hockey club. No doubt about that. You're looking to pick a Canadian hockey team for 1988. Some of the players you've seen, who would you like to see on it? Darcy from... Uh, We've seen 56, so I know that's a tough question. Yeah, it's difficult. We know that, that Dave King is not looking to find an entire squad amongst those 56 players. Some will come from junior ranks, no question about that, and uh, other sources, colleges that uh, couldn't provide players. But, uh, if you're picking a team, you've got three or four guys that you'd like to see on it. Well, it'll be interesting to see if some of the draft picks this year will be around guys like Ryan Stewart, uh, Simpson, who's plays at Michigan. These guys are supposed to go high in the first round. If, if they're want to be involved in the Olympic program. I'm sure Dave King would love to have those type of players. We are ready now for the presentation of the, the awards post game. The top defensive player first. The winner will receive a commemorative. And this from the Continental Bank. For the team of Dynamo of Moscow, for the Moscow Dynamo, the number 16, number 16, Oleg Mikulchik. So Mikulchik, the top defensive player in game 10. He's a youngster, only 20 years old, and he played very well tonight, I thought. We had the distinction of all the press and the people on TV of picking the players tonight. Merci, monsieur. Well, I think it shows well there. Vice-President-General-Québec-Pour-La-Banque-Continentale. <laughs> Now for uh, the trophy Labat Esso du joueur le plus utile. Now the Labat Esso most valuable player award. Now there's a most valuable player from both teams to be awarded. Le plus utile pour l'équipe du Canada. Labatt to make the presentation to the team Canada. On accueille de la brasserie Labat, Monsieur Gilles Lauzon. Well, it must be quite a thrill for a lot of these young players to play in the Montreal Forum for the first time, Darcy. Well, I know the first time I ever played here was a tremendous thrill. Panasonic. The winner will receive a travel pigeon by Panasonic. For l'équipe du Canada, le joueur le plus utile, the most valuable player for Team Canada, le numéro 3, number 3, Serge Roy. Well, Serge Roy was not supposed to be in the lineup for Team Canada tonight. A bad back had given him some problems, and he was uh, a very doubtful starter. In fact, Dave King told us he wouldn't play prior to the game, or he I, didn't think I he would. I really would. admire that young man. Uh, the morning skate, there's no way he could hardly walk, and he came out, and all the players are very happy for him because he played a great game. And now the player to the top, so, the award to the top Soviet player. The Moscow Dynamo director. And this will be a Nikon FG camera. Jacques Bedard. The vainqueur recevra une magnifique caméra de marque Nikon FG. Le gagnant, the winner, le numéro 20, number 20, Mishkat Fakrutino. Well, you can hardly argue with that selection. He got a couple of goals, including uh, the first goal just 40 seconds in. He scored two goals tonight. Was a, Actually, the whole series was a thorn in the Canadian side. Uh, scored six goals throughout this series. And a very talented young man. He's 26 years old. So the final score stands at 5 to 4 for the Soviet over Team Canada. And the series score stands at eight wins for the Moscow Dynamo and two for Team Canada. An entertaining evening of hockey and Canada coming extremely close at the Forum in Montreal in the final game of the series. Not quite close enough.